Good morning, good morning, good morning, Pine Hills Community Church. Glad to see you guys here. You in the house. Hello out there, social media land. Pine Hills Community Church is on the air now. Glad to have you with us. And we just thank you for being a part of this worship experience this morning. And something hit me hard and heavy this week. And it had to do with forgiveness. You look at Psalm 51 and you see the author who happens to be King David. He starts off saying, Lord, return unto me the joy of my salvation. If you don't know anything about David, and most of us do, I want to share with you. David was a bad boy. Yeah, he followed the Lord. He loved the Lord. The Lord said he was a man after his own heart. But David hit a rough patch in his life. And when he realized as God dealt with him, he came back to his spiritual senses. And he said, God, I've sinned against you and nobody else. Now, that doesn't mean that David didn't sin against other people. The gist is his sin was so grievous. His sin was so great, and that's how any sin is, okay, that God is the one who you sinned against. And so the view is, it is a hideous sin, whatever sin you do or commit. And David said, God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation, your salvation. I don't feel good, Lord. I can't worship you right. I can't pray to you right until I come and do some business with you. And you know what David was doing? He was saying, God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. Whether he prostrated himself on his knees or whether he prostrated himself on his heart, he was saying, forgive me, God. Forgive me. And that's what we need to do. We just want to thank you right now, Lord, for forgiving us. Think about what you have done this week, maybe even today. And you know it wasn't right. You know it was contrary to the word of God. Say, God, forgive me. And be sincere about it. Let it be from your heart. Lord, and he'd be true to his word. He'll forgive you. And as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he'll remove your sin from you. And I just want to thank you right now, God, for giving me the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. I want to thank you right now, Lord, for forgiving me. I want to thank you right now, Lord, for forgiving Pine Hills. I want to thank you right now, Lord, for forgiving any local assembly, wherever they may be, for their waywardness, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for just forgiving me, God. Thank you for just knocking the dirt off my chest and say, go back out there and let's get at it again. Come on, I still got work for you to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, God, for giving us forgiveness. Praise your name, Lord, that you don't have our sins against us, Lord. Because if you did, where would we be? But you're true to your word, Lord. You say, I never forsaken or leave you. And I just want to thank you right now, God. Praise your holy name, Father, for being who you are. Thank you, Lord, for being Alpha and Omega, the beginning of my salvation. Praise you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us rightly, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Team, lead us in praise of the Lord today. Thank you, Father. to do I don't know what you come to do but God is he's able but God he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think 
Oh my God, is there anybody glad that what you think it means it's just too small? When God gets in it, what you think he makes it bigger. He maximizes that thing. I'm so glad that my whatever I think he can do more than that. Hallelujah. Put your hands together right there in your home. We're so excited to worship with you in your home and most importantly with you that are here. Oh, oh. Hey, put your hands on it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Exceedingly above.
sometimes it seems like it can be an option. But no matter what you may be facing, if you would just hold on to God's unchanging hand, if you would just hold on to the promise that he gave you, he will see you through it. I know it may be dark right now. I know it may be dreary right now. But if you trust in the name of the Lord, while others trust in horses, others trust in chariots, we will trust in the name of the Lord. Oh, my God. He's a strong tower. The righteous run into him and they are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. so grateful for how you keep us we are so grateful for how you cover us we are so grateful for how you protect us oh, yeah. as Reverend Christian was standing up here and he was saying just all the things that we do and we know it's not right sometimes when people catch you wrong and you know that look you might not have said nothing but it's that look I'm constantly asking the Lord, deliver my faith, Father, please. Because it might not be what you say. Sometimes it's just what we do. And in that moment, what if God would have called my name? What if God would have called your name in that moment? So we're grateful, Father, that you continue to give us another chance. We're grateful, Father, that you continue to love on us. We're grateful, Father, that you are so perfect while we are yet in is there anybody grateful? I've got a grateful heart, oh God. Hey, you keep us every day of our life. You keep us every day of our life. Hey, you keep us every day of our life. we bless you it's evident that you all have come to praise and lift the name of the Lord for there is a sweet presence of the Lord in this place and I know that we have another song on the agenda but what the Spirit of the Lord is asking for he's asking for you to surrender right here right now in his presence just begin to tell him how much you love him begin to worship him in your own way I can't tell you what to say I can't tell you what to do but whatever it is that you render to him that lets him know that you appreciate him do that in this moment because he is here he's here he's here I said he's here he's here he's here oh what would you do if Yahweh walked in the room? Well, I'm here to tell you he's standing right in front of you. How would you worship him? 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 Oh, we love you, Jesus. Said we bow down at your feet and we cry holy, holy, holy with the angels. He's just looking to hear your voice. You don't have to be a singer just to say, I love you, Daddy. You don't have to be a singer just to say, Lord, I need more of you. You don't have to be a singer just to say, Lord, I welcome you right here in this space. And in this time, I've created an altar that you can come and live in. You can come and live in. Oh.
heaven, Lord. I love you forever. No matter how hard it gets, we'll love you, Father. We love you forever, forever, Lord. Said we need more of you, Jesus. We need you to carry the load of life. Said we need more of you, Jesus. I need you. Said I need you, Father. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. There's an old song and it just says, I need you.
bless your name today. We honor you in the house. Have your way in this place. May your spirit rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, forevermore. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you, God, for your visitation. Continue, God, please forgive us of our sins, our wrongful thoughts. that we've done that's unpleasing in your sight forgive us but we bless your name today as a corporate body and we come in here asking you to be with us it's in Jesus name we pray amen 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 come on stand to your feet let's get into the word Um, go to Genesis chapter 3 and uh, those who are watching online thank you so much for joining us on today it's an honor to have you And I'm going to read a very familiar scripture. Uh, you can go to, let's go to start from verse 1. Chapter 3 of Genesis. The Bible records, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5 says, For God doth, doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And verse 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse seven says, and the eyes of them were uh, both, eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Um, I'm not going to give you a title. I'm going to break some preaching rules. Um, but I just want to talk to you today, sis. We're going to be with some couples after I hope that the couples are coming with us to Cheesecake Factory. We're just going to kick it for a moment. But I want to talk to those who are either in a relationship, you're headed for a relationship, if we can today y'all to keep me in prayer I'm gonna be honest with you this is tough for me I just lost my nephew so um pastor is pushing today I'm pushing okay um you go ahead and have your seats I'm pushing today so what y'all get today excuse me I definitely need your prayers um Though I'm pushing today, it's not that I'm just giving you any old thing. But I really want to talk to those who are in a relationship and those who are 
getting into relationship uh, or according to the national calendar this is national lovers day national lovers day so i want to kind of target this to um, our couples in here mary j blige born january 11th is an american singer songwriter and actress often referred to as the queen of hip-hop soul and queen of r&b mary j blige has won nine grammy awards primetime emmy award four american music awards 12 naacp image awards and 12 billboard music award awards including the billboard icon award she has been nominated for three golden globe awards and two academy awards including one of her supporting role in the film mudbound is in 2011 there was an album from her cd uh, it was called my life Two: the journey continues it featured artists some of y'all may know him, some of you may not. His name was Drake. Mary J. Blige got this song, and I don't know who actually wrote the song, but she wrote these words, bad boys ain't no good. Good boys ain't no fun. Lord knows that I should run off with the right one. Me and Mr. Wrong get along so good, even though he breaks my heart so bad. We got a special thing going on, me and Mr. Wrong. Even if I try, no, I never could give him up because he loves like that. Ain't no way that I'm moving on. Oh, I love Mr. Wrong. Hung up off your good, you call and I run. My, my family screaming at me, don't do it, don't do it, Mary. I guess they are never had none. I guess they never had none. Mary tells us, her and Mr. Wrong get along so good, church. And church, that's the thing that gets us sometimes because we are okay when we're getting along with, with people. But we're getting along with the wrong ones in, in that particular space. I'm not advocating you have to be rude to people. But you definitely in these days have to be straight up with folks. Because sometimes you can be entertaining Mr. Wrong and Miss Wrong. Yeah. Mary told us, even though he breaks my heart so bad, we got a special thing going on. And here is what some of us, we got to, we, we got to, we got to, I, I believe that some of us can testify, bad hearts. You can have bad hearts and yet have ongoing relationships. We're living in a time where we're having, we're, we're okay with having bad hearts, but still continuing on in our relationships. Okay. If we take in bad hearts yet having ongoing relationships, what are we passing down to the next generation that is behind us, that's coming up? Because you do know that we are responsible for teaching those who are coming behind us. We teach them that it's okay in these days to have a good vibe with each other, but remain broken for the next however many years we are together. It's okay that we have a good vibe, but I am torn into pieces with you. 
For us both to have good energy, this is what we're teaching our kids, for us both to have good energy and chemistry, yet be miserable. Because the very thing that one cares about, the other don't. Mr. Wrong didn't care about, now Mary probably didn't write this. I don't believe Mary, as a matter of fact, when I did the research, I think it was four people, four to five people that came together and wrote this particular song. But if we could just use Mary, Mary, please, if you ever watch Pine Hills Community Church, um, and you see me preaching this. I am not saying that you wrote this song. I'm just using you as an example to just kind of just bring this together. Okay, Mary. And if you are watching us, please sow a seed in the Pine Hills Community Church to help us do what we need to do in this community. Amen. That's a shameless plug. Here it is. Okay. Here it is, though. Um, For us both to have good energy and chemistry yet be miserable because the very thing that one cares about, the other don't. I see that in the lyrics that Mary was more about the little good the man presented rather than the much wrong she was experiencing. And I've come to discover is that we are willing to indulge ourselves into what we like and what we want rather than what we know God said, which keeps us from living life, watch this, the way God want us to live it, so we live life on a tightrope. Have you ever seen on the TV, you watching somebody walk on a tightrope? Because when they're walking on a tightrope, they got to make sure that they have one foot in front of the other, and then they got to make sure they stay focused on the tightrope. They just can't watch this, do the whip and the nay-nay and do the electric slide as they please on the tightrope if they're going to stay on the tightrope. They got to make sure that they focus in on the tightrope. They are not able or freely to move. And some of us are used to being in relationships or entertaining relationships where we're on a tightrope. That watch this, you're not able to be free. And so you live a life where it's tight. And that ain't God. I'm not a marriage counselor, but can I pastor you for a minute? Being in relationships where we got to be on a tight rope is, watch this, it's dangerous for the future of your relationship. God does not want you to be a part of the body of Christ where you always got to be uptight. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Here it is. I came to set the captives, Luke chapter 4, free. God wants you to experience freedom in your relationship and anytime you're always uncomfortable, we got to talk about where we are. Because sometimes you can be experiencing Mr. Wrong or Miss Wrong. And we got to fix it because our next generation is watching us. Pastor Miles, why are you talking about this? Because when you look at chapter 3, we have here, now the serpent was more crafty than the other beast of the field that the other God had made. That I'm sorry, that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may um, eat of the uh, fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. Okay, I need everybody, if you can, go to Genesis chapter 2 really quick. Go to Genesis chapter 2 really quick. Verse 15 verse, uh, through 17. Genesis chapter 2. Here it is. Verse 15 through 17. The Bible says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest, watch this, freely eat, but of the tree of the, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day... That thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Here it is. 
Um, isn't it amazing that God puts this tree right smack dab in the garden? And then the Lord commands, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why, why don't God want you to know about good and evil? The reason, I suppose, is that you may become open to both sides of good and evil. You're open to what's good about everything. And you're open to what's wrong about everything. Our knowledge concerning what's in front of us causes us to now judge, watch this, based off the mere fact that Eve was getting ready to partake of this particular fruit. Once she take of it, she now has a uh, knowledge um, of good and evil. Watch this. And so whatever's in front of her, now she gets to judge it, makes a decision. What's in front of us, what's in front of Eve and Adam, now you get to, you have the knowledge of good and evil. And here is the thing. Do we like what's good? Do we like what's bad? Do we agree with what's good? And do we agree with what's bad? Do we dislike what's good? And do we dislike what's bad? And the reason I'm asking this is because when God created Adam, what we, what, watch this, what he knew was what he knew. That's all he knew was, watch this, I'm in this garden. Okay, here it is. He witnessed God put him in the garden. He give, God gives him a job to keep it up. And then also he orders him not to touch it or eat the tree of knowledge. He also saw God, watch this, create animals from the dirt that he was standing in, in this particular garden. What he did not see was the woman who was created for him because Adam was asleep. I know I'm in the scriptures. Now here it is. Pastor Miles, you're going a little bit far. God in the beginning, did not want us to have knowledge of good and evil. And I believe God did not want us to have knowledge of good and evil. Um, the reason is, is because, watch this, sometimes if, if God lets you have knowledge of good and evil, and now you, you know about it, what, what you think is good may not be good to God. We can see that. Because Eve made a decision to still go beyond what God said based off what she saw and based off of what she wanted. Okay. We are in, still in this place, I believe. You know God told you not to, but you still do it anyway. Still, you still do it anyway. And watch this. Watch this. It's, it's because that's what you want. Mary J. Blige still wanted Mr. Wrong. That's what she wants. She know he ain't no good, Miss Rowena. She know he ain't no good, but she desires Mr. Wrong. Or watch this, fellas. We ain't off the hook. Sometimes we can desire Miss Wrong. You know this ain't God. Or maybe you don't know. In this case, Adam and Eve, they know what they were supposed to do. And here it is. I believe that you can have knowledge, but there are some things God, God rather you not know about. You can have knowledge, but there are some things that God don't want you to know about. You can have the knowledge of where you are and what's in this garden of Eden, but there are some stuff I want to keep from you. Yeah, there's some stuff I want to keep from you. There's some stuff I don't want you to know about. Adam saw Eve after she was made. He didn't get to see her being made. 
There's some stuff he going to let you in on, and there's some stuff he ain't going to let you in on. Oh, I'm in the text because y'all do know that God put Adam to sleep, don't you? He did not get to see her being made. There are some things God wants to keep from you, just like the tree of good and evil. There are some things God desires to keep from you. And though it's in a good place, it can still be wrong. Because we do recognize that the tree was in what God created. Okay, okay. Though it's in a good place, it can still be wrong. And here it is. It's not wrong, not because it's bad. It's that the order was for you not to touch it or eat it. The tree is not the problem. Okay. And what happens is we get to the point where we start blaming God and we get to the point where we start blaming the trees. Pastor, what you mean the trees? Things that we think brought the sin. Um, or, 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 and sometimes we blame people for our problem because, and here it is, the truth is that, watch this, the tree was in what God created, which means if he created it, he saw that it was good, but here is the question for those in relationship. What did God tell you? What, what did God tell you? I ain't talking about him. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about what did God tell you about the space that you're in presently? Because our responsibility is to handle what's in our own spaces. You can't keep blaming him or her. I want to ask you, what did God tell you? What, what did God, because God clearly spoke to Adam. Clearly in Genesis chapter 2, he clearly spoke and he says, I'm putting you here. I need you to watch this, keep it. I need you to dress it up. That's what he told him. I need, I, need, I need you to do it. But as you're doing this, I need you not to touch the tree. And, and let's be honest, there were and are things we all like that was good, that we feel now that is good, and surely there were some things we like that was bad, and it is still bad. And we make a choice to still indulge. We make a choice to still, watch this, you ever, you, you ever, you ever, you ever knew you was wrong, but you didn't want to admit that you were wrong? Okay, 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 I, everybody quiet in here. Couples, we going to make it. Y'all hear me? We are going to make it. Here it is. There are some times that you got to just admit, man, yeah, I, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I apologize. Uh, I just, and then watch this. Just be honest enough and tell them to their face. I knew I was wrong a long time ago. I just didn't want you to know <laughs> that I was wrong. Some of you know that you should, you eat, watch this, because some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Some of you know you eat the wrong foods. Some of you know we go further than we should when it comes down to drinking our little drinks. Some of you know we go places we have not to, uh, we should not go, and you know you shouldn't go because you can't disclose it to everybody. Watch this, and, and, and here it is. This, this, this puts you in a place where now you're uncomfortable. Church, our evaluation in the beginning was not needed at first of good and bad. We did not have to weigh in our thoughts towards anything concerning good or evil. 
We did not have to give our two cent at all. But Adam and Eve opened the door for it. The question I have is that why did God not want us to have knowledge of good and evil? It didn't say we could not have knowledge. It said we could not eat the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. And watch this. Some say that the tree, one theologian said, it was placed there to test out their obedience. That may be true. I don't know. But what we can gather is that it is this. He told them, don't touch it and don't eat it. And the consequence of it being touched and the consequence of it being eaten, watch this, the Bible says immediately once they ate, her eyes, their eyes were open. Okay. Yeah, the eyes was open. Um, the eyes was open. What do you mean the eyes was open? Okay, Pastor Miles, the eyes would do, were they just walking around with their eyes closed? No, their eyes were open. Watch this. Their eyes saw something different. They were, they had a whole perspective, a whole, uh, uh, another view. It was, watch this, that they can do things freely. Um, but now that when they look at things, they look at things differently. And that's what sin does. It gets you to look at things differently. It gets you to the point that, watch this, you used to be straight up with each other, but now you're questioning everything. That's what sin does. I'm telling you, sin opens your eyes to stuff. God say, I, I, I really didn't want you to see this. I, I, didn't, I didn't want you to see this. I wanted you to enjoy life. I wanted you to watch this have self-control. But now, but now you're in a place where you didn't bit off the fruit. The Bible says, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 through 25, and Adam said, there is now, watch this, after um, um, God, he, 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 uh, he creates Adam. And so when you look at it, the Bible says, after he created Adam, he's, uh, um, um, and he says this, and he created uh, the wife, uh, uh, Eve, he says, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father father and his mother. Wait a minute, wait a minute, because first of all, God, I'm trying to figure out why is this in Genesis chapter 2, and you're talking about, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. How do you talk about that when, watch this, God, you created the man, and I don't see a woman involved in the creation. Wait a minute, I got questions. I got questions because, God, you take out time to put in a thought that you would want man and woman to have for the rest of their days that watch this men that you're going to get to the point where as you grow up you are going to have to leave your father and your mother for now on you're going to have to leave your father and your mother and you're going to have to cleave come here Quan. hurry up hurry up baby come here come here and you matching me today you quit looking at what I'm taking out of my closet okay come in here come in come in you're going to have to leave now Watch this. He goes from talking about he created man, giving the man assignment, what he's supposed to do um, in the garden, and then also he tell him what to touch, what not to touch, and then he feels that man should not be alone, so he creates woman. He put Adam to sleep, and he brings out the woman out of Adam, wakes, her, wakes him back up, and now here it is. After he's together, he sees this woman, and here's the woman. He says, watch this. Now you two shall become, here it is, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm saying it because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to lead y'all astray. Here it is, he says, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Here is what's important, men, let me talk to you. Because the problem is, we keep leaving when we should be cleaving. And we're trying to figure out why the devil is in the midst of our relationship. Because when you look at the definition of cleave, listen to me, it is to impinge, it is to cling, it is to abide fast, it is to follow close, it is to be joined, it is to keep, it is to overtake, it is to pursue hard. Watch this. Quan, go walk. 
walk. It is wherever you're going. Walk down them steps. Wherever you're going, I'm going. I'm clinging to you. What you doing? Where you going? I'm right here. Why am I right here? Now watch this. You may be in front of me, but I'm with you wherever you go because as a real husband, a godly husband, wherever you go, I cover you. I got your back wherever I'm clinging. I'm not going to sit here and let the devil get between us because if the devil can get between us, the reason he can get between us is because I let there be a gap. Keep walking. I let there be a gap. I don't want to say nothing. I know I'm wrong. I know you're wrong, but I never keep walking. I don't say one word and I leave a gap in between. And we're trying to figure out why are our marriages and our relationships are going down. But there are some women that don't like men being all up in their business neither. Y'all ain't going to help me talk, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Your man is supposed to cleave and keep a tight. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Be right on you because at the end of the day, I'm responsible for this house. I'm responsible for this relationship and I may be doing it wrong. I may be doing it right, but whatever you do, you better not let me leave. I got to cleave to my baby. I'm staying right with you. We're going to stay tight. Look at your neighbor and say, you better keep it tight. You better, don't you let nobody get you, get between your relationship. Don't you let no other woman tell you about your man. Don't you let no other man tell you about your woman. You better keep it tight. Somebody say, keep it tight. Go ahead and have a seat. You, 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 you got to keep it tight. And the reason why you got to keep it tight, because God said as a man, not a boy, he says of man that leaves his father and, uh, uh, and mother, a man, a man is mature, a man is grown. You are going and keeping a tight rope on her. You keeping it, you keeping it tight. You keep it, we in this thing together. If you fighting, I'm fighting. If you, if you work in the business, I'm working the business. If you preaching, I'm preaching. Y'all ain't saying nothing because in the bible in the in the beginning watch this we were supposed to be one okay y'all don't believe me okay 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 oh pastor miles what are you talking about we're supposed to be one therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and the bible says there shall be what church okay y'all ain't talking loud enough they shall be one flesh we are in this together. I need somebody to talk to me. Somebody shout it. We are in this together. Let me tell you, I need all my married couples to talk back to me and don't be scared up in here. If you want to see godly marriages, make it. I came to tell you, I need somebody to say, it. we are in this together. Okay. And see, some of y'all don't know that just made the devil mad. Because the devil want to see gaps in your relationships. The devil want to see you have a crevice. He said, you ain't got to give me a big gap. Just give me a little bit. That's why I watched this. The serpent came to Eve. And when she, oh, God. And if you notice in the text, look at when the serpent came. It was in the next chapter. As soon as you get your job, your assignment, your calling, God gives you the ministry that you're supposed to have. He gives you the husband or the wife you're supposed to have. Don't you just think the devil going to sit there and let y'all go on with your life. He is coming for the gaps. The devil is in your gaps. So if you want to know what's the problem with us, check your gaps. I need somebody to hear me in the spirit. You need to check where are we separated at? Because watch this, the enemy is tearing us up. It's hurting my heart. It's breaking me down. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing up in here. But if we can come together and work this thing out and talk this thing through and get God up in this, I'm telling you, what did God say? Let, next time you get into an argument or you get in trouble with your spouse, you need to ask them, what did God say? Uh, what? What did God say? And some of you, you got to be careful because some of you using God for your own. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a get, I'm a get, I'm a get in trouble. But I came to tell somebody, sometimes you knowing too much scripture can be your problem. Because some of us don't know how to interpret the text. And since you don't know how to interpret the text, you think that what you're saying is, what's this right? But you can have the right heart with the wrong interpretation of the text and you still be wrong. 
Okay, which now God holds you responsible because you don't have the right interpretation of how he see the scripture. You got your own way of seeing it. Come here, Eve. Watch this. The enemy comes in and talks to her as in a way that, watch this, he can get her to see how he see. Not how God see. So the devil is wise and crafty with switching up game to play the game. But we got a lot of people who are in relationships that are not cleaving. Uh, they're leaving. What are they leaving? They're either leaving the relationships or they're leaving the gaps. Okay. Okay. So you, you want to... Uh, the reason why Mary can stay with Mr. Wrong is because Mr. Wrong really ain't right. He only appears that he's right. Because if he was right, he'll be making sure that your heart is okay. But if you are comfortable with your broken heart and steady want to be with me and be broken, then you confuse and messed up. He just ain't telling you that. Because the problem, well, my God, when you got the enemy in the relationship, here it is. He will confuse you to make what is on the other side look like it is what it is when it ain't. Okay. Okay. Uh, t t tell your neighbor the grass may be greener on the other side but you got some grass that's fake <laughs> you ain't really real you ain't they need oh god I feel oh I gotta get up out of here here it is here it is you ain't you ain't the real thing here it is watch this here it is okay okay I'm comfortable here it is uh, the, the, the man is supposed to clean. He didn't say the woman clean. She's not to clean. You clean. That's why it's man's responsibility. Grab your wife and come here, Kwan. Come here. Come here. Come here. Because there are times where, watch this, I have to be on my wife's heels. I know you got your friends. I even got her sisters in here. I love her sisters. But there's sometimes I got to get in the midst of sisters. Y'all ain't hear me. I love Toya. Toy, I love you. Don't hate on me now. Let me talk good now. There's times where I need, yeah, you got to stay home tonight. Y'all ain't hear me. You've been busy all week. I ain't seen you all week. Why y'all looking at me crazy? I need you to stay with me tonight. I don't care we're going to play a game or I don't care we playing games. Let me tell you, we're going to be together tonight. You can't go where you want to go. Why? Because watch this. In a relationship, it is the man's responsibility to keep it clean. We got to clean. And sometimes, ladies, I know it's hard to hear the man. It's hard to hear it. But you agreed and you told God he was it. If you don't respect his authority, you always going to have a problem. That's why, that's why, watch this. Notice, I need you to notice something, get something else. Listen to me, y'all. Um, do y'all know when Eve took of the fruit, uh, ate the fruit, it was not until Adam ate the fruit that the eyes were open? Toya, she ate the fruit, and I asked God, well, why didn't you let her see differently when she see? Because she's seeing first. She did it first. So the man is off the hook. So I went through more study. The thing is, no, the man won off the hook because according to scriptures, it was the woman who was deceived. But it was the man who disobeyed. How? Oh, I want to karate kick somebody. I'm trying to tell y'all, listen, because you got to watch Paul's theology of women. Oh, because he'll point.
brought you back to say it was the woman that was deceived. But no, it was the, when God spoke to the man in Genesis chapter 2, he told him what to do. You knew what was supposed to be done, but you didn't say nothing. But here it is. That's why Paul says she was deceived. Both of y'all are off the chain. Why? Because you are disobedient and she is dece and she's walking in deception. So you're trying to figure out why is relationships jacked up. It's because both of us are off the chain and none of us are trying to admit it. We just shoot the blame. <laughs> I gotta get up out of here. Listen, here it is. Here it is. So now women... You've been beating yourself down and trying to figure out, I'm this, I'm that. You, you go all in this shame. And that's another thing I'm going to talk about next week because I want to talk about shame. Because watch this. In Genesis chapter 2, they both were naked. They had no problem. The last verse in chapter 2. It was not until chapter 3 that, watch this, when they both sinned, they saw themselves as naked. So then they go get fig trees to cover themselves up. The reason why you got to cover yourself up is because now you are shame. Shame puts you in a place of hiding. Watch this. Sometimes the hiding is because you can't handle... Um, you can't handle what you did, so you beat yourself down. And sometimes the other part of shame is you can't handle the people who are now talking about you because now your business has got out, and now you start feeling inadequate in all of what you do based off of what you did. But the reason Jesus came is what you would watch this, is that you would do away with this shame, and you would go ahead and live. Watch this. Oh, my God. Because I know you did something wrong, but watch this. I'm going to come and die on the cross for your sins so you don't have to worry about doing something to get back in my grace. All I need you to do is believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. I'm sorry. You got to admit that you are a sinner. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that he is Lord. And watch this. You repent and turn away from your wicked ways and say, God, now I'm back to my original state. How do you want me to live this kingdom life? Because I want to be free and free indeed. Everybody stand to your feet. Ah. Okay. All right. So today, today, all my couples, I hope y'all going to Cheesecake Factory with me. Because today we're not, we not, I'm not preaching nothing down no table. I want to eat my chicken and be done and gone. It's been a long week for me. I'm telling y'all, I'm sorry. Some of you are supposed to go visit. I, I didn't. After I heard that information about my nephew, y'all, I didn't want to go nowhere. I don't want to, I ain't going to even lie to you. I didn't. But I'm keeping my, what I told you, to go with our couples today. Fellas, we got work to do. And ladies, you got work to do too. Once Eve ate of the tree, I want you to look at the consequences that came behind that is that now the woman will have to submit to her man. In the beginning, it wasn't like that. We were equals. But because of sin, now, since God can't trust you, ladies, and watch this, and it's so funny, God had to put somebody in front. He said, man, I might as well just keep the man up front. Uh, he was disobedient. Both of them was wrong, but and she was deceived. So here's what we're going to do. Um, ladies, just submit to your man, please. The problem is, some of us women, you're so strong-minded. You don't know when to bag back and keep your mouth shut. And I know it's hard. That's it. Said so God is working on me. But there's times where you got to get with your man and do it in a quiet space and do it. Don't do it when the tension is high. But you say, baby, this broke my heart. I, I, why are we doing this like this? And what did God tell you? And what is God revealing to you? And watch this. Some of you, you got to be careful because you use scripture and not the Holy Spirit. And watch this. You can focus on what God said and not what God is saying. Uh, God is, watch this. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. To continue to talk to you and walk you 
through your transition of life so that you can stay cleaving and not leaving. It's hard. It's hard out here for relationships. You think you're going through something? Me and my wife is not exempt. We go through some stuff too. And we're still trying to learn how do we keep this thing going after 16 years. Some of y'all have been together for so long and we just need to sit down and talk how you made it. How did you do it? Because the truth of the matter is it haven't always been sunshiny days. There's been some times where you just wanted to walk away if we all be honest. But there was something on the inside of you that's saying, I love you too much to leave you. I know you're crazy. I know you a fool. Watch this. Come on. I know you talk too much. I know you run your mouth too much. I know you don't listen to me. But watch this. When I decided to get married to you, I told God that I was in this for better or for worse. You are worth every bit of it. I wish I knew back then what I know now. I would not have wasted time. But because God has come into my life, God is in the business of redeeming time. I came to prophesy and announce over to somebody that when your relationship was broken, and you thought that it was the worst I want somebody to receive this lift your hand is this for you watch this I came to tell you he's going to redeem the time he is going to redeem the time you are not too far down that God cannot redeem your relationship I need somebody to shout restoration yeah yes uh, I come against any satanic attack that wants your marriage separated. You can work this thing out if y'all want it. You, you can work, you can work this thing out if you want it. I know a lot of people don't want us to talk about marriages today, but we can't really build effective churches if we don't have effective families. And it start with the man and woman of God. You got to make a decision. Watch this. We're going to do this thing together. I got my hangups. I got my own traditional dogmas. I got my own philosophies of life. I'm not asking you for that. I'm asking you this question as we get ready to leave here. What did God say to you? And if you cannot answer that, this is the way you need to, this is how you need to do it. You need to go back into your prayer time and you need to say, God, I need you to reveal to me what I supposed to be doing. So I bind every demonic force by the power name of Jesus ah, that your marriage will work that you will be a team you may have to cry it out you may have to fuss it out but we are on our way back to redemption I love you too much to let the enemy have place in our relationship. And yes, you might call me overprotective or over I'm possessive. No, I'm not possessive. I'm just protective. I, wow, my God. I'm protective of what we got. It may seem like I'm a dog, but let me be a dog until God work with this dog. I'm telling you, I'm going to fight for my relationship. So if you're in here right now, you got your wife or you're in a relationship and you're dating and you're contemplating getting married and you're contemplating, watch this, we want to take this for Grab the hand now. Those who are not in relationship, I need you to pray for them. I need, I, need, I need you to pray. You can stretch your hand towards that way because watch this. Your relationship is going to be an example to your children. Your relationship is going to be an example to our community. Your relationship is going to be an example to our church. I'm not saying that you got to do this to show off. What I am saying is God placed you as believers so that you could be an example to somebody that God is still in the miracle working business. So what I want you to do right now, I want you to pray for the hand that you're holding. You got your relationship. And your man, if your man on assignment, I want you to pray for him now. They're not in here right now. Pray for them now. Everybody's praying. Everybody's praying. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is after your relationship. And I sense it in the spirit. I sense it. He's after us, y'all. You are a mighty team. We are a team. We are a team. Come here, baby. We're a team. Come here. We're a team. We're a team. We're a team. We're a team. It may be hard, but we're a team. It may get rough. We're a team. We may have some silent nights. We may go to bed not talking to each other. But we got to come back because we're a team. We got to work this thing called life. We got to work this thing called marriage. We got people depending on us. We don't want it, but God gave it to us. It come with the calling. We going to work it together. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release God. I pray for healing in this house. I pray for deliverance over your marriage. I pray for any strongholds to be broken right now over your relationship. In the mighty name of Jesus, let you walk in freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, every tear that you cried, every, every, watch this, every pain that you had, I pray that God redeem those times right now. I pray that the day this be a starting place where God work out your love life, that God work out your intimacy life, that God work out your communication right now in the name of Jesus that God allows you to go on trips and create memories and to do new things right now because you didn't got used to each other you didn't got familiar with each other I pray right now newness in your relationship creativity new places new thing new home new car and in the mighty name of Jesus let there be godly relationships coming from this house in Jesus name those may be watching, you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. And you want to get to know Him today. All you got to do is admit that you're a sinner. Believe that He died on the cross for you and confess with your mouth. At that point, you will be saved. After you believe, though, show Him that you believe by finding a church get in somebody's church where you can commit to serving the local local body and you can grow if there's somebody in here right now and you want to be saved all heads about you can raise your hand now not only that maybe you don't have a church home and you want to be committed to a church and you say man i want to i want to get somewhere i want to be covered i want to get somewhere i can um, work my gift i want to grow if that's you, raise your hand now. Will there be one? Will there be one? Amen. We didn't already pray. If there's somebody in here, you didn't, um, you're going through some things right now in the name of Jesus. Maybe if it's not marital problems, but in the name of Jesus, whatever it is, if there's sickness in the body, if there is pain anywhere, if there is some kind of struggle, if it's tight right now, Father God, for them and they're uncomfortable, God, I pray that you um, speak to them in time right now, Father God, and, 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 and I pray that there may be a peace that comes upon them now. God, God, continue being with them. Let them know that they're not by themselves in this season. That God, you got them. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, you may have your seats. Amen. Come on, let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. Listen, we got to immediately get up out of here and get the uh, uh, Cheesecake Factory couples. Um, and so immediately once we're out of church, I want you to head over there, uh, uh, Cheesecake Factory in Winter Park. So you can Google that Cheesecake Factory. There's only one Cheesecake Factory in Winter Park, okay? And so we want you to meet us over there. We're going to eat good today. Don't get jealous, Veronica. Don't get jealous. Amen. Don't come sneak up on us neither. Don't know. No, you can't sit at our table today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Those who are coming, we're going to leave right after church. So get in your cars and let's go to Cheesecake Factory and let's just have a good time eating. Amen. Amen. Everybody, um, we're going to go ahead and receive the offering. Lord, we, um, also, we thank you for those who are watching. Those who are watching us online, listen, you can give via Cash Out, Money Sign Love, PHCC. Money Sign Love, PHCC. You can also give uh, Give La Fly as well, uh, Tithely. 
Yes, Tithely. I'm sorry, Tithely as well. You can give your tithe. Look for Pine Hills Community Church, Orlando, uh, Florida. Also, um, you can mail your checks in as well. Mail your checks in as well, okay? Mail your checks in as well. Listen, we thank you for the seeds that have been sown. Um, 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 those who will continue to, to do that, we really appreciate you. Those who are watching us online, we love you. We appreciate you. Until next time, um, shalom. We love you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, if we got any visitors in the house, if we got any visitors.